Okay, last section in probability. We're going to learn different counting methods because probability is really based on total number of outcomes and then the number of ways that an event can occur. I'm not so sure that I agree with the book here that there are five different methods. I suppose if you count all the different ones, we'll see there may be five. I tend to lump some of them together because they're the same concepts. We've seen this one before, the multiplication counting rule. So let's roll three dice. How many outcomes? Or you may be thinking how many things are in the sample space. Well, I've got three slots. First, second, and third for the three dice. There's six outcomes for the first six for the second, six for the third. Counting rule says multiply those together, 216 total outcomes. So if I ask for the probability of rolling three sixes, well, there's 216 outcomes. The only way to get three sixes, there's only one way, that's a small probability. Here's another good application of this. This is what I call the ATM pin problem. You've got four digits in your ATM pin. Now in each one of these, your digit could be zero to nine. That gives us 10 possibilities for each one. So you can think of this as with replacement because you get all 10 of these digits every time. So this is 10 to the fourth, 10,000 different ATM pin combinations. So that's not a lot. So if there's more than 10,000 people at your bank, two of you share the same ATM pin number. Pretty soon maybe they'll go to one more and suddenly there's 100,000. Factorial. Find this button on your calculator. It may be in a probability function depending on your calculator and it just may be that button. Basically, factorial comes up a lot in mathematics. And if I say five factorial, it means I start at five and I multiply decreasing all the way down to one. So this is 120. Six factorial, I do this. Well, notice that six times this stuff, and that is five factorial. So that's six times 120 is 720. On your calculator, I ask you to try this. Find 10 factorial. really big number. Notice it's much better than six factorial. Try 100 factorial, see what you get. But this comes up with permutations and stuff. I still think of it as the counting rule. 
This just says that by definition, zero factorial is one. And what this is saying in mathematics, if you have n factorial, it means you're starting at n, you're decreasing each time until you get down to three times two times one. Okay, they say this is the factorial rule. I just think of it as the multiplication counting rule. But without replacement. So let's see why I say that. In the ATM pin problem, there were 10 digits available in each slot. This is gonna be a little different. So how many different travel itineraries are possible? Well, you've got five places you're going to visit. You have five choices for the first. But now since you chose the first, say you chose to see Harris first, there's only four choices for the second, and so on. So you can see that it's without replacement because you don't have five choices for each one. We already know this is 120. So I didn't think of it as the factorial rule. I just thought of it as the multiplication counting rule without replacement. Probability that you visit them from youngest to oldest, there's only one way you could do that. So there's one out of the 120 total ways you could visit. Okay. Probably the hardest thing in this section is deciding is something a permutation or combination. What does that mean? So let's start with permutations. So the sequences counted separately. People think of this as order matters. It matters in what order you put the letters. So in this case, you have three letters. There are six permutations. You can think of it as this way. Three choices for the first, two choices for the second, and then there's only one choice for the third because the order matters, that's six. Now compare this to a combination where order does not matter. Same three letters. These are all the same. So there's really only one combination of these three letters. So really when you're counting, you decide is it a permutation or a combination problem? And we'll do some examples, if not in this video, in another when I look at specific problems. If you like mnemonics, here you go. Permutations, position, combinations, committee. Because if you're just forming a committee, I, I actually think of a team where I don't care about the order of people that I select. Find this button on your calculator. Let's go back to when we were visiting the five company presidents or something. We were doing five, which is the end, the total, but we wanted to know how many different permutations of five are there. So you wanna be able to do this on your calculator because it's so much easier than the formula. But notice the form of the formula. This N minus R comes up when we don't fill all the slots. 
which I'll show you soon. So if you find this, you will get 120, which is the same as what we did. Because look at this, this was five factorial. This is five subtract five factorial. Five factorial over zero factorial. And that's why we define zero factorial to be one. And here we get it, which is the 120. Okay, I'm gonna do this two ways. I'm gonna do the permutations rule, and then I'm going to do the counting rule because to be honest, that's how I view these problems. Doesn't matter how you do it. Okay, trifecta, you gotta pick the first, second, and third. So you gotta get them in the correct order right there, permutation problem. So I'm thinking N, P, R, there are 19, that's my N. I'm picking three for second and third. 19 P three, do it on your calculator. 5,814. So that's doing it with permutations. I just go, well, I'm in a race. There's first, second, and third places. So there's 19 choices for first, 18 for second, 17 for third. And lo and behold, I got the exact same answer. I guess I prefer this method just because of the, the organization of it where I can see what's happening into the problem. This is just really procedural, meaning I got to plug stuff into a formula or the calculator. Okay, I'm gonna go through this. It doesn't come up that much. You have to use this formula, there's no magic button. And all this means is you're doing stuff without replacement. So, if you have all these available, but you have some items that are identical, you know, the same, they show up in the formula. So let's do it with an example. You're designing a survey. Sometimes repeat a question to see if the subject is really reading them. I should do that on an exam. So with one survey, they had 10 but two of them were identical to each other, N3. So this is like an N, an N1, and an N2 in the formula. So our formula would be N factorial, N1 factorial times N2 factorial, that's 10 factorial, three factorial over two factorial, I'm gonna let you practice your calculator. We know 10 factorial is a big number. But you get a lot of different permutations of how you could list the survey. So no, it's not practical. There's just way too many ways for you to build the survey. Hey, we got the same answer, yay. Okay, combinations. A little bit different formula. And to be honest, we kind of have to use this because there's no counting rule for these. So you're doing it without replacement, but order does not matter. So this R factorial shows up because we get less combinations than permutations. Remember, permutations was this. Here we're dividing by this extra term, so I'm, my number is going to be smaller. 
lotteries. Those are combinations. We do not care how those five numbers are selected because if, no matter the order, we're really happy. So we're going to select five numbers from 39. Order does not matter. So how many different are, tickets are possible? Okay, NCR in this case, there's 39 possible. We're doing combinations of five. Five hundred seventy-five thousand seven fifty-seven. So the probability of you winning, there's only one way to get the five winning numbers. This is really small probability. Let me think of another quick combination problem. 23 students how many ways can I select a team of four for statistic Super Bowl Keyword here, team, because I don't care about the order. I just want four people. So this becomes a combination problem. I'm doing the combination of four from 23, 8,855 ways I could select my statistics team. Now, do the same thing. 23 students. How many ways can we select a president, a vice president, a secretary, and a treasurer? Well, now the order is imposed. And there's two ways to do it. I'll do my way because I know I'm kind of have four people here in a row, 23 for president. That gives me 22 for VP, 21 for secretary. Oops, that's me thinking ahead. And 20 for treasurer. Notice many more ways to do the permutations than the combinations. If you want to do the formula, we're doing permutations, we're only doing four. You get the same value. So that is this section.